Hello guys! This video we're gonna talk about the top five constructor cards that Amaz believes is gonna be just the best. Right? It's just gonna be found in every single meta deck. It's gonna be what defines the meta, and it's also gonna be like the biggest power level ever, okay? Um, interesting enough for this list, um, there's not gonna be a rating from one to five. All five of these top cards are just gonna be good. And they're also found in different classes. So it's really hard to compare, say, like a Druid card or a Hunter card, right? Because you just can't put them in the same deck together. But all of these cards are just nutsos. If you open them in a pack, congratulations. And if you want to um, craft some of these cards, you can just craft them because they're just gonna be great. So the first card we can see here is Duskbreaker from Priest. It's a four mana, three, three dragon. And if you're holding another dragon, you get to actually um, deal three damage to all other minions when you play it. So it's basically a Hellfire on crack, right? Not only are you casting a Hellfire that doesn't damage your own face, which is great when you're playing Priest, you just want to get the value and get to the long game and just um, get a lot of tempo, right? So you need time for that. You're also playing a 3-3 on top of the AoE, right? So there are just some decks that don't beat this card, right? Like any aggro deck just kind of just cries. So uh, Dragon Priest will definitely be back with the addition of Dustbreaker, which also makes cards like Secret Agent coming through really, really powerful again. The second card that's really insane is from Rogue. It's the Elven Minstrel. For four mana, you get a 3-2. And if you can combo him out, you get to draw two minions from your deck. Uh, there's a reason why Ancient of Lore was nerfed. Because it was considered too OP. It was a seven mana, five, five that drew two cards. This is not only a cheaper Ancient of Lore with adjusted stats because it's four mana, three, two, which is really good. It's also even better because it draws exactly minions, right? You would think that it only drawing minions and not spells in the very spell heavy um, class is bad, but it's actually not, right? Not only do you actually get the strong minions, you know, there's like, you know, the new Sonya um, legendary, Sonya Shadow Dancer. There's also stuff like Gas and Auctioneer. You can fish them out and then leave more spells in the deck to cycle them more. Uh, you can also get like Bone Mares and Scale Banes uh, if you're playing that kind of deck. You can also draw two buffed minions from Keliseth if you're playing that deck as well. So this is just even more, even better than the format three, two, draw two cards. And you're obviously playing a de uh, class with backstabs and preparations. So combo is not gonna be a hard thing. So this is an insane card. Next up, we have Cobalt Librarian. Um, it's actually very weird that a one mana two one makes the top five list, right? You, you, you would never have guessed it. But this little minion for Rolock um, draws you a card at the cost of two damage. So what this effectively means is you're playing a one mana two one and you get a free life tap. So technically speaking already, it's like a three mana card in one, right? You get you get a free life tap. Why this is good is because it fits in every single warlock archetype, okay? Say you're playing zoo, obviously you would love to play a one mana two one card. Uh, that cycles itself so you can get your soul fires and doom guards faster and your bone mares faster if you're playing like a more mid-range zoo so this is great if you're playing uh demon lock then you're effectively playing 28 card deck which is great so you can draw to your um you know Gul'dan, death knight faster you can draw to your aoe's faster and finally there's also the new spell stone um that's uh, being introduced to Warlock, which upgrades when you hurt yourself with your cards. And this is the best card to do it because hurting yourself and drawing a card means that you buff your Spellstone. And then the Spellstone has life steal, so you can steal, uh, so you can heal yourself back up. So Cobalt Librarian is going to be an all-star in every single Warlock deck. Next up, which might be a surprise to some people out there, which underrated this card, is the Jasper Spellstone from Druid. Uh, it's actually one of the new spell stones, of course. Uh, it's for one mana, you get to deal two damage to a minion, and then you get you can upgrade this if this is in your hand, and you gain three armor at the same time, right? So if you gain three armor, it turns into one mana, deal four damage, and then you can upgrade that one more time, and then you can um, deal six damage to a minion. Why this is so strong is because the later version, the last version, is a one mana remove an opponent's minion, 
right? Like, dealing 6 damage to a minion effectively removes it, right? The, the only things it doesn't remove is like giants and twilight drakes and like really, really big stuff. But at that point, you don't really care because you're really playing druid, right? Um, some people might think it's really hard to actually um, proc this card, but I think this is an auto include druid because there is this card called Malfurion the Pestilence. It's a death knight card from druid and not only does it change your hero power to gain 3 armor, which means that you can upgrade this very, very quickly, you also get to gain 5 armor immediately when you play the Death Knight. So, once you have the Death Knight activated, all your Jasper Spellstones effectively turn into 1 mana deal 6 damage. And the Temple Swing is going to be insane. You're effectively playing Naturalize without the negative side effect. So, I think Druid's that played the uh, Druid Death Knight will immediately just include this because this is just utterly ridiculous. It might not be in the first decks of uh, Cobalt and Catacombs because people don't realize the power level of this card, but trust me in this, this card is going to be found in every single tournament winning deck that has Druid in it. It's insane. Before we get to our final card, Obviously, we have to give some honorable honorable mentions. We have Seki Scream for Priest, a very good uh, good AOE card that's better than Twisting Nether. It's also cheaper. It's going to see a lot of play in the Control Priest. There's also Call to Arms, which is going to be really, really powerful Paladin card. For 4 mana, you get 6 mana worth of stuff. And you also give reason for your deck to play stuff like Dirty Rat that you otherwise wouldn't like to play too much. And of course, we have the Leyline Manipulator, which is a 4-mana Yeti that's for Elemental Mage. Uh, it's still an Elemental, and it also reduces all your Discover cards and even cards that uh, don't appear at the start of your deck, like Pyros, right? It actually gives them a big decrease. So keep an eye out for those. And of course, the final card um, that makes the top 5 Amaz list is Master Oakheart. This card is actually the most interesting card out of the expansion, and I think it's the power level is also insanely high. For 9 mana, you get a 5-5, five, five, and you get a battle cry, of course, right? 9 mana 5-5s five, are pretty terrible. Uh, the battle cry is actually very interesting. You get to recruit a 1, 2, and a 3 attack minion. So when you play Master O card, you get 4 minions at once, basically, right? You pull a recruit is when you, you pull the minions up from your deck and put it on the battlefield immediately. Um, there are so many ways to abuse this card that um, there, there can be decks that are built entirely upon them, right? Uh, there are new cards that just got released uh, that, that um, satisfy this requirement. Cards that I can name the top of my head right now would be Voidlord, uh, 9 mana 3 9 taunt from uh, Warlock uh, that summons 3 Void Walkers when it dies. Very prime re recruit target there. There's also the 9 mana 2 4 Dragon Hatcher, which recruits a dragon at the end of your turn. Which, hey, guess what? Since you battle card of Oakheart, you get a proc with the um, Dragon Hatcher as well. And why not combo that? with the Drakari Enchanter, which is found in the previous expansion that makes it so that your end of turn effects trigger twice. So you can pull Drakari Enchanter and you can pull Dragon Hatcher and then the Dragon Hatcher gets twice and then you get another three drop and suddenly you just played Master Oakheart on an empty board and you got seven minions at once, right? Um, that's not to mention that there's just still so many good targets that you can target this with. Like Tar Creeper works, Tar Lord, Tar Lurker, all, all the Tar Elementals work. There's just even more combos that I probably haven't think, thought of yet, but this is definitely a nine mana card that is going to impact um, a lot of tempo decks because it just puts a lot of stuff. It puts a lot of stats. And um, experience would tell you that Bone Mare, which is a card that puts a lot of stats on the board, would be a good card. This is Bone Mare on crack. So there you go. Anyways, that is my top five Amaz cards list. Let me know what you think about the list. And if you think I missed some OP cards, you can mention them in the comments below. But like, I'm gonna double down on this, okay? Um, you guys can also guess how many stars this video is gonna get. For each card that I mentioned that's gonna be like insane, I get one star. So I think this is going to be a five star review for constructed, I'm just, I'm just, 
you know, putting it out there. At the end of the Kobolds and Catacombs uh, meta, we'll see if we're right. So very excited to play the set. Um, hopefully you open some of these cards yourselves.